This is Wind Caves, a uh, pretty cool little scenic area high in the Bear River Range up Logan Canyon in northern Utah. Um, and this amazing little cave um, really has the wrong name. Um, the wind has absolutely nothing to do with the formation of this cave. So we're going to explore this cave, uh, explain a little bit about the rocks here, what they can tell us, uh, and then look for any cool features we might find as we explore this a little bit. And so this rock here is all limestone, this grayish rock. You can kind of see it's, it's crudely layered here. It's bedded. Uh, we can kind of see looking across this small canyon here, we can see some of the same layering. Uh, and then even running down the canyon uh, across the way in the distance there, uh, this limestone was all deposited at the bottom of the ocean, uh, probably in water depths of a few hundred feet of water, probably a little shallower than that. Um, because in places we see fossils here, there's uh, really excellent invertebrate fossils like horn corals, clams, that sort of thing. Um, and this limestone was deposited underwater in the ocean about 350 million years ago during the Mississippian period. Uh, and here it is, you know, a thousand or so feet above Logan Canyon floor, probably at an elevation of, you know, between five and 6,000 feet. Uh, this limestone is really interesting rock because what happens is this rock based on its chemistry, it's a little bit soluble, which means when water, water that's maybe a little bit acidic, like rainwater, is in contact with this rock, it actually dissolves it a little bit. And this process of dissolving out the limestone is what produces these caves, caves that we often find um, in various places. Sometimes like in places like Florida, we find sinkholes form in this type of rock where the rock gets dissolved and there's collapse from below. So this cave has nothing to do with the wind. It was actually carved out by water and not just surface water, but groundwater. And yet here it is, you know, 800 to 1,000 feet above the valley floor. And so that begs the question of how this formed. And to answer that, you have to look a little bit <clears throat> at how caves form, how the water table, where the level of the groundwater uh, relates to it, and also uh, rivers and streams. So down there in the valley floor <clears throat> is the Logan River. And at the time this cave formed, um, this landscape would have looked a little bit different. Instead of um, being high on this, this ridge line up here, this cave would have been below the valley floor, um, some, some depth, maybe you know, tens of feet, maybe a couple hundred feet. And <clears throat> being below the water table uh, and the groundwater, the cave was eventually created. It was carved out by the dissolving uh, action of the groundwater, the acidic groundwater, dissolving out the rocks over time. And what happened later was uh, the mountain range was uplifted. This is, uh, there's a large fault that runs along the west side of the Bear River Range called the East Cache Fault that has pushed these mountains up relative to the valley. That's what actually forms the Cache Valley <coughs> that Logan sits in. And so as these earthquakes and this faulting activity push the mountains up, the water table dropped lower and lower, keeping pace with it. And eventually the water table um, connected to the river and rivers down there um, was down in the valley. And these old caves that were once down in the valley were kind of left high and dry. And so we'll head into this cave a little bit here, kind of show you uh, what we see here. There's actually a place here where there's kind of a secondary channel in the cave. Uh, it's kind of got a steeply sloping floor. If we kind of pan around, we can see a kind of a skylight or a little uh, collapse section of the cave there. That may have been an original opening of the cave um, from above. And then we can kind of see this secondary channel over here off to the side. Um, who knows how old the cave is? I'm sure there's a date on it somewhere. It's, it's definitely in the, the thousands of years, maybe tens to hundreds of thousands of years. And originally, I would assume this cave, like a lot of caves in limestone, would have had some pretty interesting cave features like stalactites, that sort of thing, um, probably due to the people visiting and also just weathering processes like frost, uh, freeze-thaw cycles, that sort of thing. I'm not really seeing too many of those, um, but in some places you can kind of get a sense for um, <clears throat> sort of the flow stone. You can actually see amongst all the graffiti in here, you can actually see places where uh, the rock is actually kind of smooth, where it was pro it's probably the original uh, cave surface. Other places it looks more jagged and kind of broken off. Um, so we can kind of 
head over to this side of the cave and we can still see in places there's seeps and places where water <coughs> is coming uh, out of the cave through some small little fractures. This is probably just from the most recent uh, rain event or some precipitation they've had here uh, not too long ago. Uh, the cave, just sort of judging its overall dimensions here, is maybe 20 feet high at its highest um, with maybe a diameter of about 50 to 60 feet or so. Um, and we get a great view across the canyon to the south and that same prominent cliff band that you see out there in the distance, uh, that's the same layer of Mississippian limestone that forms this cave here. There's lots of other caves in Logan Canyon, uh, but this is kind of a fun one to hike to. You know, obviously don't need a flashlight um, and there's not much of it left uh, because parts of it have been eroded away and it's been kind of high and dry here for quite some time. Um, so pretty great scenery here. Uh, Wind Cave in the Bear River Range near Logan Canyon uh, in Northern Utah. Just quite a little exquisite little place to hike to.